was Michael's friendship and support that helped him beat the cancer. They've remained close friends ever since. When you stay here, do you stay in the house? Do you, does Michael let you enjoy the whole premises? There was one night I stood in the yard, I asked him if I could stay in the bedroom. And he let me stay in the bedroom. And I was like, Michael, you can sleep, sleep on the bed. And he was like, no, 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 you sleep on the bed, sleep on the bed. We're like, no, 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 you sleep on, you sleep on the bed. And then he finally said, okay, if you love me, you sleep on the bed. I was like, oh, man. And so I finally slept on the bed. But it was fun that night. I slept on the floor. Uh, I wasn't sleeping back. No, I he's, he's, he's packed the whole mess of blankets up the floor. <laughs> what? But Michael, you know, you're a 44-year-old man now. What, what do you get out of this? What do you get out of this? Uh, he's four. Yeah, I'm four. Uh, I love... Um, I feel... See, I think what they get from me, I get from them. I told, I've said it many times, my greatest inspiration comes from kids. Every song I write, every dance I do, all the poetry I write, is all inspired from that level of innocence, that consciousness of purity. And children have that. I see God in the face of children. And um, man, uh, I just love being around that, that all the time. Are you guys still staying up late? Sometimes I call your house so late. Oh yeah, you're like, but you tell me to call, you tell me to call late. We did, that was when one time. people that hear time. that, children from other families have come and they've stayed in your house they've stayed in your bedroom um, well very few but you know some have and they say is that really appropriate for a man a grown yeah. man to be doing that how do you respond to that i feel sorry for them because that's judging someone who wants to really help people why can't you share your bed that the, the most loving thing to do is to share your bed with someone you, know? really, you really think that? Yeah, of so course. You're taking the position that you use yeah. every single night that you go into. You sleep, and you're sharing it with another. You say you can and have my bed if you want. Sleep in it. I'll sleep on the floor. You can. It's yours. I always give the best to the company, you know? Like to him, I said, because he was going to sleep on the floor. I said, no, you sleep in the bed, I'll sleep on the floor. But haven't you got a spare room or a spare house here where he could have stayed yeah but no yes I have, we have guest units but whenever kids come here they always want to stay with me <laughs> they never want to stay in the guest and i have never invited them in my room they always just want to stay they say can i stay with you tonight i go if it's okay with your parents yes you can did, did, did you were your parents happy that you were here with with michael yeah my mom was all very 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 happy and i know they're happy because i was happy did they come with you? Yeah, most of the time, but I wasn't really with my parents. I was mainly with Michael. But they were happy that you were here? Yeah. I felt very uneasy after this conversation. I knew I had to confront Jackson about what I thought was an obsession with children. It just couldn't be avoided. Early in the new year, Jackson agreed to what would be our final meeting, this time in Miami, Florida. There were unanswered questions, lots of them, areas of his life about which I felt he'd been less than honest. His face, his denials about plastic surgery, his relationship with Blanket's mother, and of course, I also wanted to return to the Neverland sleepovers. Confronting him wouldn't be easy, but now it had to happen. As we prepared for the interview, the atmosphere was unusually tense. This time, Jackson had flown in his own lighting expert. Maybe there was a reason for that. Cosmetic surgery was to be the focus of some difficult questions. When we were talking some time ago you you talked about how when you went through adolescence yeah you had a a terrible time yeah and in fact I had a look at some pictures of mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. during that period mm -hmm. and you did have a lot of spots yeah yeah <laughs>
One of the things that you've clearly used to overcome this is changing your appearance. You, you've, you've kind of, you know, you're, you're, you've physically changed, haven't you? The photographs of you, if I look at them No, it's from... called adolescence. It's called growing and changing. Y yeah, but even the shape of your face has changed. No, it has not. I've had no plastic surgery on my face, just my nose. It helped me breathe better so I can hit higher notes. But are you, are you, Michael, are you honestly saying that you've only ever had one operation? Two. You've had two? As I can remember. Yeah, just two. But if I, if I look at some of the photographs of you in your adolescence... Yeah, I change. People change. But, but even after, when you did the Thriller album, hmm? your, your lips are very different now to no, what they were no, then. No. But they, they do look different. No, sorry. You Same don't think lips. so? Nope. <laughs> but, you know, on a serious point, in some ways, I can understand it because I'm happy with my lips. No, no, but I, no, forget the lips, but it's specifically, but I, and I, everybody in Hollywood get plastic surgery. Plastic surgery wasn't invented for Michael Jackson. No, I'm not suggesting everybody it was invented for it. Michael Jackson. But what I'm saying is, sometimes people go too far. Sometimes, if they've got a lot of money, and they have an opportunity, sometimes they can think, oh, I'll do things, especially given your childhood. I mean. While we've talked, I've become, I've begun to understand how difficult that was for you, how unhappy you were as a child. Yeah. As an adolescent, how, how unhappy you were about your appearance. You told me in Neverland that your father used to insult you. You told me in Las Vegas your father used to talk about your nose. Yeah. So I can understand why you wanted to change your appearance. Yeah. It makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Just I wouldn't that. want, I wouldn't want just that, though, not the whole face, just the nose. They try to say, why do you keep changing it? It's not true. It's just the nose, you know? Even though the shape of the face is different. Because I've changed. My, How have you changed? I was a little kid. I'm, no, I'm, I'm talking my, about my pictures of you in your out. 20s. No, I'm still, I was changing. I was changing. I'm telling you the honest truth. I don't do anything to my face. Honestly. Honestly. We broke off, but not for long. Next up were my worries about the children. When I was talking to Prince one day, he said to me that uh, he, he didn't have a mother. He said he didn't have a mother? Yeah, I said, Prince, where's your mummy? And he said, I haven't got a mother. That's right. D did you tell him to say that? No. What do you think he means when he says, I haven't got a mother? Like he said, he didn't have a mother. Do you not think, though, that your children would benefit from contact with their mother? No, because she doesn't... Uh, it's private information. She doesn't... She's, she, she can't handle it. She can't handle her own children? She'd prefer them be with me than with her. Did you know that she didn't want to have relationships with the children when you married her? Yeah. <clears throat> she did it for me. She did it for me. So just so that I understand this correctly... She's a wonderful person, too. She, she knew that Michael Jackson loves children. Yeah. And she knew that Michael Jackson wanted children. That's why. And she, she said, was... you need to be a daddy. Right. She said you needed to be a daddy. Mm -hmm. More than she needed to be a mother. Yeah. And she wanted to do that for me as a present. As a present? Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? It's a gift. I used to walk around holding baby dolls. Really? Yeah. Because I wanted children so badly. What you've just said is that your wife gave you two children as a present because she knew you wanted to be a father. Yeah, that's a lovely gesture. Well, it's an incredible gesture. Yeah, there are surrogate mothers who do that every day. That happens every day in the world. Is that it's how, happening right now. Is that how Blanket was born as well? I used a surrogate mother on my own sperm cells. I had my own sperm cells and my other two children. They're all my children. But I used a surrogate mother. And uh, she doesn't know me. I don't know her. And uh, that's how I was born. How did you select the mother out of interest? It didn't matter to me, as long as she was healthy. Did I you? didn't care what race. I said... As long as she's healthy and she doesn't have eye, you know, she, her vision's good and her intellect. I want to, you know, I want to know how intelligent she is. Would you have had, would you have 
would you have conceived it?